You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. Get a reporter Sarah Carter out with a huge bombshell new report on the Uranium One scandal tonight. Sarah's reporting, quote, the informant who spent years gathering information on the Russia energy and uranium market industry for the FBI met staff members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, House Oversight and the House Intelligence Committees. Well, that all happened earlier today where he gave explosive testimony on his years as an undercover informant providing information to the FBI on Russian criminal networks that are operating right inside the United States. He also contends in his testimony and his written briefs that the FBI, that Russia attempted to hide their ongoing aid to help sustain Iran's nuclear industry at the time the Obama administration, in fact, approved the sale of 20% of U.S. Uh, uranium mining rights to Russia. Now, we did reach out to Hillary Clinton for a statement. Her spokesman called the informant, quote, a charade and a distraction. Here with more, Fox News contributor broke this story, Sarah Carter, lawyer for the FBI informant, Victoria Tunsing. We've got to put this in context here. He worked for the FBI many, many years, uh, and then he worked in particular, if I'm not mistaken, Sarah, six years on this particular case. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Victoria, you're shaking your head. Yes, he, he uh, was introduced to the FBI and they immediately sent him over to work with the CIA, which he did for about uh, 15, 20 years. And then okay. when he got involved in the uranium and Russian uh, places, the CIA turned him back over to FBI counterintelligence. So he, te he finally testifies today. Sarah, I want to go to your full report, but I want to remind everybody of important facts here. We, we don't have enough uranium in this country. And before the CFIUS sign signoff, the nine separate agencies signing off on the Uranium One deal, they knew that Vladimir Putin had operatives in this country that wanted to get a foothold in our uranium industry and that they were involved in bribery and racketeering and, and kickbacks and money laundering and all sorts of behavior. They knew all of this even 18 months prior and they still allowed this to go forward. Tell us what you can now break open tonight. Well, I think that's important. But what's even more important, Sean, is that they knew that the Russians were still double dealing with Iran. This was the biggest concern for the Republicans at that time. This is the reason why they didn't want the Uranium One deal to go through. And they were screaming mad about it. But everybody tried to assure everyone that Russia was no longer in the Russians themselves. They were lying about it, that they were no longer dealing with Iran on their nuclear reactors. But at that time, William Campbell, the informant, was actually providing information, and this was months before, that Russia was still dealing with Iran. And this is a major issue. So despite all the information that he provided to the FBI and to their counterintelligence unit, the Obama administration chose to ignore that and move forward with the sale of Uranium One, which wait, was the Canadian mining point. company. And the more important point is that he tried to tell people and warn people specifically about everything that was going on. And he was told and has proof and evidence that, in fact, the response was, well, it's not going to be a problem as long as Hillary's in the administration, then as secretary of state. Yes, I mean, this is exactly what he was testifying. And I know Victoria will be able to speak more to his testimony today. But this was what he was testifying to those uh, committee staffers who were questioning him, that the Russians were consistently bragging about their relationship with the Clintons and that they would be able to move this through the Obama administration without any trouble. And I know that that's something that he really wanted to bring forward. This Look, he's been suffering from cancer. He had his second bout uh, with a cancer diagnosis diagnosis and he believed that he wasn't going to make it and he wanted to ensure that his information became public and this was yeah. the only way me, he could do it all right victoria you were there the entire time today this is your client we've been waiting for this testimony for a long time i know you've had to sift through years of information um mm -hmm. what was the reaction if you can tell us of uh these committees number one and number two if you can explain the why it never made sense to allow when we knew Vladimir Putin's he had a band of supporters in the country that wanted to get our uranium and then they're still doing this with Iran that that Sarah is mentioning how could well, this ever happen 
Let me take you back to 2005, because that's when this really started, the Russian plan to take over U.S. uranium uh, piles. That was when, guess what, Bill Clinton, former president, and his multi-gazillionaire friend, Frank Jufra, traveled to Kazakhstan and bestowed all kinds of praises on the dictator there and ended up, oh my surprise, with uranium mining rights. And it was then, my client is told, that the Russians begin to plan strategically how they could take over uranium particularly in the United States. And one of the key uh, uh, proponent or uh, elements of that plan was to get the CFIUS approval to buy Uranium One. It all started it in 2005. Yes. And by, Why by, didn't they listen to your client? Your cl it sounds like he was <laughs> dumbfounded. He had all this information. He's in the heart of it. Sees all the corruption around it. He knows, I assume, that we don't have enough Uranium uh, uh, resources on our own. Why didn't anybody he's listen to him? He's, well, he's tell, telling the FBI agents that's who he's supposed to be uh, working with, and he's telling them about the strategic plan of Putin to take over the uranium industry, and he's writing up these reports and telling them about it. He's also telling them about the corruption uh, in these companies. That all of them are, you know, they're all the one company, and, even though they have different different names. But they were so they were so confident, Sean, the Russians, that they told Mr. Campbell that with the Clintons' help, it was a shoe-in to get CFIUS approval. And they were so confident in that that they even had him open up a new office because they were planning on the kind of business they were going to do as soon as CFIUS approved it. And Sarah, also, Sean, I, yeah. Sean, Victoria brought up a really good point. And your question, he did approach his FBI handlers. He asked them, why aren't you doing anything about this? Why aren't we, why aren't we arresting people now that we know this is going on? Why is this, um, you know, Uranium One deal still going through? And what he was told was, this is all politics. This is about politics. And that's what his FBI handlers told him. So take it from there. Well, and the he FBI director at the time, Robert Mueller, did he know about this? We don't know. He was, uh, Mr. Campbell was told by the FBI that he was being told and they were taking it upstairs. And he was also told that the president, Obama, mm -hmm. had it in his daily briefing twice. When, twice, when he was right? asked today, when Mr. Campbell was asked today, so why, why did you do all this for so long and you were losing money and you were sick? He said, because I'm a, a patriot. And that's wow. what I believe. And, and then we got to take everything back to the money and then the kickbacks and then the connection to the clinton foundation uh we're just out of time i want to thank you both we will stay on this story as well it's unbelievable